Well, let me mention it. All right. Because there is the allegation that you found a loophole in the law to get, uh, while you were in Mizoram, um, uh -huh. to, get your, to, to get your daughter admitted through the Mizoram quota. And although it was not illegal, it was a loophole because the quota is actually meant for the Mizoram tribals and the people who are sort of left out. And she got admitted into college on that quota. Would you say that that was a that's misuse not, of your that's power? That's not true. The, the It was meant for students who study in Mizoram. And my daughter studied in the central school in Mizoram. She took, went through the same test as other Mizos. The rules were children who were living in Mizoram, studying in Mizo schools, taking that examination and qualifying for it. But it was and, it's and meant and for second, people who are that's, privileged, no, 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 no. right? That's, that's huh. the set, that was the rule. I didn't make those rules. Had the rule been otherwise, she would have never got it. The rules fitted in. And she's left her convent of Jesus and Mary here, went to a central school which didn't even have half the roof. And she took up subjects which she wasn't very happy with. But she didn't have a choice because mommy shifted there. They, but you went away and you didn't explain your position in Mizoram about that. Do you regret doing that? Do you not feel that uh, because there were riots with, not riots, but people came out onto the streets and stuff. City was going to burn the following day. They planned to put in a curfew and the target was me to surrender the seat. Now I said, I didn't take the exam. It's my daughter who's earned it, qualified for it, already admitted. And yet, who am I to surrender the seat to save my job? I'll take care of my job while she takes care of her seat. When I realized that this is the, ol the only way is to make an exit, I made an honorable exit, informing the governor of Bizorad I'm at that time, that, sir, I'm making an honorable exit only to help bring normalcy to the state. Now, most of your life, whether it's policing or even early life, like tennis, you have won. You know, you have, in, you have succeeded in the toughest of positions. In fact, there's a quote of yours that you said that you joined the police service because of my urge to be outstanding. Now, of course, there's another victory that you have just had. Is there anything that you failed at? Oh, I lost many tennis matches. Oh, we're not interested in that. <laughs> <laughs> we're interested in the bigger picture. Is I've there anything? Many. Would you, would you see, look back on you your You know, life? I don't look at an issue as a failure. I look at something which could be done differently and I would probably do it differently next time. You, were, you wanted, um, you know, to become the commissioner of Delhi. It was rightfully yours. And I don't and treat it as a failure. You don't? No. Would you say your marriage is a successful one? Absolutely. I have a remarkable husband who is a friend, who is a, who is a soulmate and who is such a strength, who is a moral strength to me, who has been a moral strength. He may not be physically around me all the time here, but the fact is that he is one of my best friends. He is one who believes in whatever I'm doing and respects all I have. I think it's such a rare opportunity, rare thing in one's life that you have somebody who truly believes in you and respects for what you stand for. Because it's a very unique marriage to have hardly spend any time together from day one, like you've been all over the place and yet you are together in a sense. Would That's you say? Like when we were tennis friends, he knew I was sitting for the examination and I'm not going to be in Amritsar at all.